I have over 30 packages here from America and Europe. This is gonna make a really fun mail day video. I'm gonna open up some packages and show you some cards. I have all these pickups, including this book, this stack over here, and all larger cards. So let's get right into it. First off, I picked up this lot of Ogden boxers and wrestlers. These are all commons. I think I will sell these on Twitter. If anyone's trying to build a set, let me know. 1908 and 1909, I believe, are in this stack. But we'll go over the two that I'm gonna keep. First, this was an undefeated wrestler out of Russia. Not in the Hall of Fame for some reason. If you guys know why, just let me know. But not too bad there. Picked it up, the lot up fairly cheap, so I don't expect pristine looking cards. Plus 1908 or 09. I mean, they're over 100 years old. We have the Gans here as well. Obviously, this is one grade, but uh, not bad. I think that's. Up next, we have a, we'll just grab one at a time, Victor Trumper from Caps and Cigarettes. This is 1907. Don't know for sure if this is trimmed or not at the bottom. I'll have to take a look or just shifted, but there is that one over there. Sweet. Up next, we have these cards out of Malta because I don't know too much about these, so I want to get some help. Now, both these are going to be authentics because you can see this one is cut over here. This one also can't tell for sure might be trimmed but i mean if you look at the back it's horrible so expecting an a grade these just don't pop up often and uh nice edison now both different sizes as well so i assume that they're different releases sometimes there are releases though that they have different size cards within packs that is coming with some of the different music cards but you know i don't know for sure about these so if you know more let me know but i do also believe these are from 1905 around there and they look very similar to some of the Ogdens. Next we have a strip card of Tilden is a famous tennis player in the 1920s. This will look great authentic because there's no borders on the sides plus writing on the back I picked up for 15 or 20 dollars so I do want to get a nicer graded example in the future but at least for now as a starter in my collection I'll take this card. You guys know I like rock music so a Tom Morello don't believe this is his rookie card but it is numbered and there's not much modern rock cards out there this was from upper deck in 2009 actually a football heroes product so kind of cool with that one we have a Rhodes from 1901 and i saw this on ebay it was a stunner i had to pull the trigger look at the back it is shifted this back is really cool by the way some of the different releases Outside the U.S. have some really sick backs. I know some of the more expensive T206 ones do, but I mean, look at this artwork. Unbelievable. But yeah, the Rhodes. 1945 Frank Sinatra rookie out of autographs. I have to check. I think this is a print defect over here, unfortunately. Which will stop it from higher grade, but I didn't have this yet. We got some Dutch gum releases of The Who. Don't think they're rookies, but I have to do a little bit more research on them. You guys can see that they are blinked back as well. Mid-grade shape, but for what I paid, I don't really care. Going in my music PC. Up next, we have a Ray Kroc. I believe this is his first card. It's from a game. And uh, you know, thank him for McDonald's. They're there on every corner nowadays. We have two space cards. So this is the JFK. Glenn card and we also have the Alan Shepard. What makes these a little bit special is their popsicle backs, which are a bit tougher to find. So have this already in an eight non-popsicle and I already have a Shepard that's pretty nice as well, but I did not have the popsicle backs. This is an upgrade in my relic PC. One of the things I'm starting to do is change smaller relics or cheaper brands into more expensive. Floss is super expensive in other sports besides baseball. And this is a jumbo bat relic of Paul Wayner. He's in the 1933 Gaudi set. And uh, yeah, this is definitely an upgrade. Number to 10 with this jumbo bat. Have a Duke of Senator Stanford. Thank him for Stanford University. These were booklets in the 1800s. Really, really cool artwork on them. This is the Nolan Ryan of Cricket. Also is a rookie year that shares with Donald Bradman. 
can't afford the Bradman, obviously. There's some staining on the back, but it was a fairly cheap pickup. Don't know if this is Axl Rose's first card by himself. I know Guns N' Roses has earlier cards. This is a 1992 Jenky. Now this also has the first Nirvana band rookie card as well. And I do have that in my collection, but this is a fairly sharp card on the back. Nothing really there, just a sticker to peel off, but Axl Rose. This is a card I've wanted for quite a while, and I don't know the specific year. So SJC says it's 1910, PSA says 1908. All the resources I've looked up online are a mixture. So if you guys know for sure, let me know. Uh, but this is a local release as well. You'll see on the back, but this is Abe Tell. If you don't know, his connection with baseball helped orchestrate the Black Sox scandal. So a pretty cool connection on that side of things. I believe he's in the Boxing Hall of Fame, was a champion. But this is a Red Sun, and these are extremely, extremely tough cards to find. Eventually, I want to get the Langford and also the Jack Johnson, but I assume they're way out of my price range. But beautiful back on this one, even though it is a beater card. I think there's less than 10 of these out there. So really cool card to add into both my boxing and baseball PC. Have a few writer cards next. So another Duke and Sons. This isn't a booklet, but this is the Great American set. And then also right here, the created pretty much the science fiction genre. And I don't know too much about this prominent people set. If you guys have some info, let me know. I have to do some research after this video is done. And then we got the Great Americans. Super, super clean on this card, especially for 1800s release. Imagery really, really pops. I assume this is early 1900s, but don't know for sure. But yeah, there's those two. Next, we got Dr. W.G. Grace, the greatest cricketers of all time. Some staining on the back, but honestly, who cares? It was super cheap. Something, again, I can upgrade over time. You can thank this guy for watching this video and also taking a look at photography. This is Felix Poden, which is a French release. Some writing on the back, but uh, yeah, it's hard to get some of these cards in good shape. Some slabs over here. 1962 Eastwood. I believe this is his first English card, but could be wrong. I know he has some Japanese releases. I don't know if they're in the 50s or 60s. Documenting this type of stuff can be tough, but a good looking for. This is Canada's Bex boxer, George Dixon. And uh, when you look at the front, this thing is super, super sharp. Turn the back and there's an eight there some writing but you know i like the front of the card it's a one and a half i don't really care down to one card that i want now left in the set before i start focusing on upgrading and that is the john l sullivan which is super expensive so i don't think i'll get that card for a while but uh, you never know a national coming up and uh, you never know what you find it shows as well this is a laurel and hardy now i don't know for sure the year on this psa says it's 1930 this BCCG slab, which I don't fully trust, it's a lower, cheaper grading, says it is from 1930s in general, so no documentation on that one. This is near mint or better, it's not. If you look on the back, there is some staining right over there, but it is still pretty sharp for a 1930s release. The real rookie is 1931, but either way, I'm still gonna add this in my PC. I'll crack it one day. I don't really mind keeping it in a slab like this. I just don't wanna spend 30, 40 dollars on something that I'll hold in PC and will not be moving. Now these are more of the oversized cards and then we'll go over this right over here. So let's grab some of these. First we have a, a Wilbur Wright. Let's see the Aviator set, pretty cool gold border. I think this is 1910, correct me if I am wrong. Author of, I believe the Three Musketeers. Let's see over there, it's an Ogden. It does have some writing unfortunately on the back but uh, I gotta look at the sides of it, make sure it wasn't tipped. So that means like coloring it in, I'll have to take it out later, but it looks pretty sharp. Little, might be a little short on that side, but you can see there's a bunch of a board over there. So pretty cool. Got some nice 1985 Panini sticker cards, music wise. Got U2. These cards are pretty sharp. Let's see on those a lot larger size as well i mean i'll show you a little bit of comparison iron maiden which is their first panini card they do have an 84 which i have the highest graded on that 
luckily enough. I got the Madonna rookie. Go. Check this out. Another U2. So they had two in that. They have some 84 cards, but they're single band members, not the full band themselves. Go. And last one. Wish I got a chance to see Van Halen live. I messed up not seeing him in the early 2010s when I had the chance, but oh well, still pretty cool. That one. Not for the oversized cards, obviously some beaters, but this is a pretty cheap set. I think like $2 a card. Some presidents, obviously writing and everything like that on the back. I'll upgrade over time, I don't really care. But these are super nice. Get that over there. Both Genesis rookies in could not pass them up. And you guys are probably wondering what this book is because I keep mentioning it. Notice the pattern of rock cards. Well, this is a rock Panini book, the Two Toad. And this is from 1985. I'm going to scale this back a little bit so you guys can see some of the pages. All the stickers are in here, but the issue is they're all glued in. So I have to figure out how I will be removing these. So I'm going to do some research. If you guys have any tips or ideas, let me know in the comments. But I will also document the book as well before getting rid of the stickers out of it, just so there's pictures online of the whole thing, just in case none survive. It's another one. But this had a few different cards that I did not have in my collection yet, so I wanted to add those in there. And we'll see how I end up doing. Like this is another Iron Maiden from 85, a lot tougher to find. Another Madonna rookie. Pink Floyd. Queen. Rolling Stones were down there. Heads, Toto, another U2 down there. Let's see there. A lot, lot tougher to find than the other 85s. And uh, there you go. The back as well. So this will be a fun project, document for a YouTube video, and also my website. But yeah, that's uh, the mail day. 